Welcome boys and girls. I'm Miss Kathy and I'm here today for our wintertime walk story time. Today's stories are about our friends and family walk celebrating the holidays with animals and trees. While we were on our walk, we talked about three different kinds of trees that you can find here in the children's garden. We talked about the maple tree, we talked about the birch tree, and we talked about the calorie pear trees. We talked about those trees because all of those trees can be found on ornaments on the trees inside the building from different countries. So the maple tree, you could find maple leaves on the tree from Canada. The birch tree, you're able to, they, we know that they, we learned that they used the bark from the birch tree to make ornaments on the tree from Finland. And we talked about a partridge in a pear tree and all of the ornaments that you could find on the tree from Ireland. But when we were on our walk, did you see any leaves on those trees? I didn't. There are no leaves on the trees right now. But we're going to read a story today called Little Tree by Lauren Long. And this is a story about a tree that doesn't want to lose its leaves. What do you think would happen if a tree doesn't lose its leaves? Let's see. Little Tree by Lauren Long. Once there was a little tree filled with little leaves. Who was surrounded by other little trees who had leaves of their own. In the heat of the long summer days, little tree's leaves kept him cool. The squirrels would climb up on his branches to play. The morning dove landed in him and sang her fluty song. The little tree was sure to grow up big and strong. You see the squirrels and the morning dove. Autumn arrived and cool winds filled the air. The wind tickled the little tree as it passed through its branches and ruffled his leaves. The air grew cool and the leaves on all of the trees changed colors, becoming yellow, red, and orange. Then one by one, the trees began to drop their leaves. But not Little Tree. He just hugged his leaves tight. Hello, Little Tree, said a squirrel. You're supposed to drop your leaves. But Little Tree was unsure. What would he do without his leaves? Winter came. What are you doing with your leaves still on you? Asked the doe. Little tree hugged his trees, his leaves even tighter. Springtime arrived and the little forest burst into life again. The other trees grew bright new leaves. The squirrels played in their branches. There are the squirrels. Little tree could hear the morning dove singing her fluty song. There's little tree. Little tree doesn't look like the other trees, does he? The seasons continued to come and go. Little tree, quacked a duckling, your leaves are brown. 
Are you feeling sick? Fox said, little tree, it's autumn. It's time for you to drop your leaves. You can do it. Ready? One, two. But little tree just hugged his leaves tight. All around, the forest grew and grew. One summer, Little Tree could no longer feel the sunlight. The squirrels played high above on the broad, tall trees. Here's Little Tree, and look at all of these big trees. And the morning dove sang so far away that he could hardly hear her fluty song. Little tree is all alone down there. Autumn came again. Leaves began to blanket the ground. There's little tree. All the bright colored leaves are falling. Little tree looked up at the other trees, at their branches reaching high into the sky. Look how tall these trees have grown. There's little tree. He remembered when the trees had all been his size. And then he let go. Oh, little leaf, all of little tree's leaves are falling down. As his last leaf floated to the ground for the first time, Little Tree felt the harsh cold of winter. He was cold without his leaves. But in time, Little Tree got new leaves and look what's happening to Little Tree. Here he is here. I think this is the next year. What's happened? Has he gotten bigger? And once there was a little tree. Little tree finally got to grow like all the other trees when he let go of his leaves. While we were on our walk, we also talked about animals that you'll find on trees from the different countries. We talked about our sculpture, Two Bears by Marshall Fredericks. We talked about how bears could be found on the tree from Canada. And we talked about how you could see paw prints on the Native American tree. And our next story, is 10 Little Rabbits, written by Virginia Grossman and illustrated by Sylvia Long. This story shows us through pictures some of the traditions of Native American people. 10 Little Rabbits. One lonely traveler riding on the plane. Two graceful dancers asking for some rain. Let's see, one, two. Three busy messengers Sending out the news. This is a counting book, so now we have one, two, three rabbits. Four clever trackers looking for some clues. Four rabbits said, look at, do you recognize what that paw print is? 
On our walk, did we see a paw print of a bear? Those are bear paw prints. Five wise storytellers trying to keep warm, just like we were on a cold winter day. Six nimble runners fleeing from a storm. Seven merry mischief makers playing hide and seek. Can you find seven rabbits? Let's count them. One, two, three, four, five, six. Where's that last one? Seven, hiding in the log. Eight patient anglers fishing in a creek. An angler is a fisherman. Nine festive drummers beating on a drum. Ten sleepy weavers knowing day is done. Ten little rabbits ready for bed. Thanks for joining us today for our wintertime story times. We hope you'll come and join us on another day for our wintertime walk and story time. Bye. Awesome.